Yes, sir. Uh, we'll start. We'll start, sir. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, good evening, ma'am, sir. Today, me and my teammates, Siddhant, Sinchna, and Vanchika are here to give you a review to presentation of a project. Uh, the project we've chosen is human activity recognition using smartphone sensor. Uh, next please, Siddhant. Yeah, these are the contents for the PPT this time. Abstract, introduction, problem statement, objective, and so on. Uh, we'll start with abstract. Next please, Siddhant. Uh, human activity recognition involves predicting the movement of a person uh, based on sensor data and traditionally involves deep domain expertise and methods from signal processing to correctly engineer features from the raw data. Uh, recently, deep learning methods such as convolutional neural network and recurrent neural network have shown capable and even achieve state-of-the-art result by automatically learning features from the raw sensor data. Okay, next please, Sudan. Yeah, um, so our application will be simple and effortless activity tracker that will run in the background of Android devices and <laughs> recognizes and record physical activities uh, such as walking, uh, running, and uh, even cycling. Uh, users can set their own activity goal and using a countdown, they can see how far, they're, how far they are from achieving their daily goal. So we have planned on making an interface where a user can check their daily stats and can do personalization accordingly by uh, setting targets for each day. Uh, notification will also be sent so that you won't miss out on anything. And uh, one of the main feature we have planned on adding is to send an alert message to the nearest hospital in case of uh, any decrease in heartbeat or pulse uh, to prevent from stroke or uh, to avoid any fatal incidents. Yeah, uh, next page. Uh, since now we'll continue from this. Uh, so we design a robust activity recognition system based on a smartphone. The system uses a three-dimensional smartphone accelerometer as sensor to collect time series signals from which features are generated in both time and frequency domain. Activities such as walking, laying, sitting, standing, and climbing stairs are classified as regular physical movements and form our class of activity. Various other physiological signals such as heartbeat, respiration, etc., and environmental signals such as temperature, time, humidity can further augment the recognition process. Deep learning methods such as recurrent neural networks and one dimensional convolutional neural networks or CNN uh, have been shown to provide a state of art results on challenging activity recognition tasks with little or no data feature engineering. Next slide. Uh, so human to... activity recognition. Please go back to the slide. Our... Previous slide. Uh, see, yes, you have not told exactly what is the problem. The second part of your problem statement is the literature. No, it, it uh -huh. defines the main purpose mm -hmm. of the project, sir. Like it's more about like the first problem statement is defined here itself in the first point. The second point explains why we're doing this and like what technology has influenced the project. So it comes under problem statement and not literature service. So see here, you're talking about the various methods uh, used for uh, defining a problem, so, which has been already used Okay, for solving oh. a problem of such activities, sir. Correct, sir. So it's it's more about what has been done and what we're trying to do new. So like something that we're trying to change that comes under problem statement, right, sir? So what has been done will not come in a problem statement. That's what I'm telling. Yes, no, no, no. I didn't mean it that way, sir. I meant what has already been done, like the errors which the errors present in a project which has already been done of such stature. So we're trying to improve that using the problem statement. So that we've just highlighted the point here. Now, what are the drawbacks in the existing methods? We'll get to that, sir. There is a slide about that also. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, objective. 
uh, human activity recognition it aims to identify the actions carried out by a person given a set of observations of him or herself and the surrounding environment in order to get a better understanding of human behavior recognition this can be accomplished by exploiting the information retrieved from various sources such as environmental or sensors in order to track every activity the phone must be carried all the time the chart visualization page is customizable and users can synchronize with third party devices as well as other applications and use the app as a tool to collect and monitor a range of fitness related data in one place next okay. slide yeah yeah just a moment see actually when you are talking about uh, an objective either you are developing a simulation model or you developing a software model correct okay okay or you developing any new services product so it should be very crisp okay sir okay but here but right are... now uh, we are focusing on the algorithm first ah see you are talking about an algorithm so probably you want to build a novel or new algorithm overcoming the drawbacks of the existing uh, algorithms to um, um, for the given problem Yes, yes sir now when you are designing or developing a new algorithm somewhere that needs to be projected here so that is not there no one of the objective is to develop an algorithm to do this no sir that's not primarily the task because i'll tell you sir uh, what we're doing is we're not building anything new here sir such technologies have already existed and what we're trying to do is we're refining the algorithms already present so we're not going to be building a new algorithm out of scratch or uh we're not going to be building new functions to uh just you know achieve the same task which already uh functions are already performing so what we're trying to do here is highlighting the main points which led to this entire objective so the objective as if you go through the first paragraph itself we mentioned the characteristics which have already existed for such projects and what we're trying to improve here so that is primarily our objective no sir because objectives need to be generalized for an for every statement and the technical aspect comes in the methodology and everything so we'll get into the technical part as well but we're just trying to make uh, you know the user understand that what the purpose of the project is siddhant siddhant yeah yes ma'am uh, over sir is uh, want to tell you am i audible to you yes sir yes. yeah what sir is wanted to tell you that before the problem statement if you could mention the gaps the gap okay, okay so if you could mention the gaps of existing what happened now why you have chosen this problem statement and what is the what is the uh, uh, scope for the improvement okay ma'am that could be in terms of result total probably the existing algorithm would have given the result as say 80% okay okay got now it with your refined algorithms it is we are we are we are thinking that it will reach it will it will reach okay. we are not saying exactly approximately there will be an improvement from 80 to 85 Got it, got it. We tried to. We yes, did. We also did some study looking at. Am I right, yes, sir? Ma yeah, yeah, yes, madam. Ma'am, because uh, see, yeah. when you are telling, you are refining the algorithm means existing algorithm. What are the issues that you have to highlight it? Then what is that you are refining? You have to highlight, and how that refinement is helping you to achieve your objectives. Yes, sir. Project. So, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. They have given this information in phase one, where the literature review when they were Correct, doing. Correct, sir. Uh, they talked about the limitations of the uh, papers what they have referred into from there they sir am i audible yeah you are audible yes sir so, uh, so like in phase 1 we already went through those points we just didn't want to repeat them and also like the point which ma'am mentioned about uh, limitations in the existing system we also have that as a slide later on which i also mentioned earlier that in this slide we are going to explain the existing system but we just wanted to explain the objective in layman terms so like any person can understand what the primary goal of the project is and then we get into the later technical aspect which i'll run you down through the code as well sir okay that's the only reason we started off that way okay yes uh, yeah uh, good next, next slide, slide. yeah uh, so till now uh, we have completed on four categories like walking walking upstairs walking downstairs and standing and we are yet to figure out uh, running swimming and laying so these three categories we have to work on from now next slide now vanchika will continue yeah so for literature survey a uh, first paper we referred was jail bieber along with three others in 2011 published a paper titled the hearing trouser pocket 
activity recognition by alternate sensor. Uh, the work presented new methods of activity recognition by acceleration and sound sensors by means of sensors included in commercially available smartphones during everyday life. Mm, uh, Zi Chen and three others published a paper titled Robust Human Activity Recognition Using Smartphone Sensors via CTPCA and online SVM in 2017. A uh, coordinate transformation and principal component analysis scheme was proposed to eliminate the effect of orientation variation. However, some uh, inherent differences of signal for different placement and subject deteriorates the recognition performance of the system. Lenny Grokop and four others published a paper titled Activity and Device Position Recognition in Mobile Devices. They used a Gaussian mis mixture model. Though the accuracy achieved was higher for one data set, the result varied for another data set. Zhekiang uh, Shen and other used a motion-based Wi-Fi uh, localization method and an LCC filter algorithm. But the limitation of this approach was that it was single goal oriented and not for multiple goals. Zahin A and others use semi-supervised classifier, which extracts salient and discriminated features to train a classifier, but the results were not stable. Next slide. Coming to the limitations of existing system. So the drawbacks of the existing system are that they seem to be uh, incomplete. Connection uh, or to a very limited number of apps and devices are available. Come to the previous, uh, previous literature review. Really. Uh, Manchika? Zahina. Zahina. Uh, uh, yeah, Zahin yeah. Whenever you talk about the, whenever you talk about the I mean, literature review, please make a note that along with the authors, you are supposed to mention where the paper got published and which year the paper got published. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, they are mentioned here. We've mentioned uh, the website, so if anyone wants to access oh, that, let it, be, let it be in that in that part also, because okay. in the reference, no, uh, in reference papers, it can be even more. But when you talk about the literature review, the gaps, there might be some limited papers, but that papers, let it be in, in uh, full, clear Got information. It. Got it. Got it. Let's go to the previous literature review. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, you say it has low accuracy. Low means Correct. what? Um, uh, low mean as in around 70% accuracy. You say approximately, see, you have made a lot of literature review and you should give the quantitative data here. Okay, okay so quantitative information is missing. Got and of course, uh, the second part, the no, result varies from one data set to another data set. Yes, of course, it will happen if you take any algorithms. Yes, sir. Okay, but what is that result? So, if you thoroughly check uh, the conclusions of the paper. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you have studied, say, five years paper, you can define the scope of uh, work very well. Because this is the limitations what you have written is all vague statements. Okay, it, so sir. you have to write exactly what it is. Uh, we didn't want to be so very said, precise with it also, sir, because uh, it was just a differentiation we wanted to express, no, sir? Because we'll get into the technical aspect in the next slide, which is the methodology. But if we mentioned the entire conclusion here, it would be very technical. So we wrote it down in simple terms. I get your point. Uh, we'll do that. Because the more you do literature survey, okay, uh, better you can define the scope of the work. Got it. See, sir. there are two things that you have to consider it. If you if you are taking this work as a research project, it is different. If you are developing a software kind of a thing, that is different. Okay, Got if you're it, developing it as a service, it would be different. But uh, since by the conversation, what I understand is focusing is more on the algorithm. So how you can enhance the computational complexity of the algorithm. And when you talk about accuracy, so I think uh, your friend was telling around 70%. Yes, sir. So what has led to yes. 70%? Okay, so how okay, you I want to it, improve sir. it? Even data change is also acceptable because it gives a better result, sir. So, it, so somewhere if you can project somewhere some simulations or trials, the kind of data set. See, it's just like uh, if you're taking a feedback from five students, that will be different. If you take 50 students, it will be different. But if you take uh, um, uh, 45, 49, 50, 60, okay, you will get a consistency when you take n number of trials. 
Yes, sir. Okay, that means the training has to be done for very large data set. So here yes, you sir. have just written that result varies from one data set to another data set. But what is the the size of the data set? Exactly. How much you have taken taken for training? How much you are uh, it, sir, uh, doing it. it for evaluation? Got it. Sir. We that had that data set, but uh, we just chose not to write it. I get your point. Sir. We'll we'll definitely say because it's a very good project. If you say a research project, you can have a very good paper. Got it, sir. And uh, it you can also give it to for some health science institutions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll definitely okay. add that because your all your work sh uh, should not go waste. Somewhere it should be useful to some community or some society or some people. Yes, I see sir. that kind of an outcome in the work. Got it, sir. Got it, sir. We'll definitely change right. that, sir. Yeah, sure. It's just just a suggestion. It's up to you. Sure, sure, sir. Sure. No, we, it makes sense, sir. We got it. Yes, so I'll continue. Coming to limitations of existing system. Uh, at launch, app seems incomplete. Uh, there is a very limited connection to apps and devices. Uh, in the existing system, no entry field is there for recording sleep. There is no calorie logging system. And uh, it, they do not estimate calorie burn. Next slide. Uh, we'll go, uh, yeah, coming to the metho methodology part. Uh, we are classifying movements among six categories. That is walking, walking upstairs, walking downstairs, sitting, standing, and laying. So uh, compared to a classical approach using a, a RNN, RNN with long short-term memory cells require no or almost no feature engineering. Data can be fed directly into the neural networks that acts like a black box modeling the problem correctly. Other research on the activity recognition data set can use a big amount of feature engineering, which is rather a signal processing approach combined with classical data science techniques. An RNN takes many uh, input vectors to process them and output other vectors. And LSTM is an improved RNN. It is more complex, but easier to train, avoiding what is called the vanishing gradient problem. Now, Siddhant will execute the code. Sir, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yes, yes, sir. I'll run you down through the code as to uh, all the progress that we've made, sir. So we've tried to make it as detailed as possible so it is uh, understood uh, very easily even when a person looks at it for the first time. So uh, the first part, as uh, we do in any project, we import all the libraries. So here, uh, NumPy, Matplotlib, TensorFlow, some of the important uh, libraries that we're going to be using in the entire project for you know training and visualizing the data sets and performing all the complex operations using NumPy. So um, the second part of the code, which is this, we define the main uh, variables and general uh, data types which are going to be used uh, in the entire projects, like the variables which are going to be used for calculation purposes. What is which the are, size of the data set? Uh, our data set has almost uh, 43,000 pictures sir, as of now. 43,000, OK. From where did you yes, take the data? We took it from UCI source database. Okay, yeah. UCI, OK, right. Okay. I'll continue, sir. Yeah, please. I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that, sir. So uh, the input signal types, which are basically our uh, input parameters. Oh, one one second, sir. Huh, yes, sir. Uh, so our input signal types, these are basically our uh, input elements which are going to be processing in the project. Those are uh, these nine uh, major variables, which are basically the body acceleration in every direction, which is the X, Y, Z. So these accelerations are calculated over a period of time to predict the kind of moment which is happening. The, the next three parameters are the gyroscopic uh, radiuses of every moment. So these uh, refer the spin and the acceleration spin in each direction. So that tells us if the uh, body is moving uh, in circular directions or uh, in you know radial paths. And total acceleration is the final acceleration of the body in each direction. That tells us the way the body is moving in each path. So these nine data, uh, these nine data points, if uh, predicted for any human using the smartphone sensor, can predict the final values of the outcome, and that is what we're going to be doing. Uh, labels. So these are basically the final labels that our model is going to be predicting as of now. But we, you know, tend to uh, like we're our goal is to add way more activities uh, possible, such as uh, you know, it calculates sleep. You can calculate your cycling activities. You can calculate running activities, but they require a lot more data sets and uh, recurrent training. 
so that we're still working on because as this is phase 2 we're showing you the improvement that which is that we made as a uh, roughly what is the uh, size of the training data set and what is the size yeah. of testing data set i'll get that i'll get to that sir the training data set as of now has 31400 images sir mm. and the uh, the test data has the rest 12000 Okay. I'll take you, you that. I think that is sufficient to get the accuracy uh, what you wanted to achieve. Yes, sir. Because uh, practically speaking, a lot of human data can be collected, and forty three thousand is still a very small number. But uh, we went through almost every sort of uh, you know repository online, and even on Kaggle, mm-hmm. OCL, on anything, the maximum data set which we found was around forty five thousand. Uh, but okay. that had a very less accuracy, so we came down to this data set, sir, and we're able to get almost an accuracy of eighty three percent as of now. So we're still trying to work on better data sets, and if we get a better data set, we're going to be upgrading the model and you know improving okay. the entire project. Right, right. Yes, sir. So uh, firstly, we download the data set as uh, mentioned by my teammate. Uh, we go through the OCI HAR data set. Uh, I'll take you to there also. Okay, that's all. Okay, technical uh, this thing. Uh... So anyway, when you are explaining all these things, you have done it. Maybe you can. Yes, sir. Ha. So basically, we, I'll just I'll tell you in rough, sir. We download the data set. Here we, you know, in the preparing data set, we prepare the two sets, which is the training and test set, as you mentioned, sir. Mm-hmm. We split the data set accordingly in a ninety percent to one or ten percent ratio. And once that is done, we add our additional parameters, which is basically our learning parameter, our lambda functions, our, our display parameters, batch size, and all of those. and then we define our functions which is the you know recurrent neural network and long short term memory functions which are going to be shaping and transposing the entire matrix once that is done we begin right. with the building neural network so this is where what is the size right. of matrix what is the size of matrix that you have taken which matrix sir which you are specifying now the batch size sir that's the batch ah. size for each matrix that's 1500 we have totally 43000 no sir so we have oh. we have divided them into batch sizes of 1500 uh, images And each batch size has fifteen hundred images put in a matrix form with a learning parameter of point zero zero two five, and these are going to okay. be running through the function. Okay, if batch sizes differs from okay. one uh, trial sets, uh, yes. I mean to say in the trials, yes, sir. Whether the the kind of accuracy that you are getting uh, will be increased or decreased, or have you seen whether it is consistent or something like that? Yes, sir. So if you reduce batch sizes after a point, sir, like say if we take batch sizes of five hundred. Over a period of forty-three thousand images, uh, then the accuracy over the training set will be almost hundred percent, which is overfitting. So the training uh-huh. data set, the training data set won't respond. The training data set will not uh-huh. get uh, like the training data set will get full accuracy, but the test data set will get a lot of incorrect values. So uh, practically, uh-huh. our accuracy reduces, but on the training data, our accuracy increases. So we don't want to overfit the model. But say if we take larger okay. batch sizes, the training will be less, and the model won't be very uh, predictive. So that is underfitting. so uh, almost the uh, batch size of 1500 works appropriately and even 1300 works fine but 1500 uh, seemed easier for calculation so which was uh, 1500 okay maybe you can just take some interval maybe mm-hmm. from x batch size to y batch size yes, so if sir. you do the simulation for n number of times correct uh, somewhere for some data no you yes. get a consistency value so that value ca- that value can take it as a batch size Okay, for okay. the stability of the you know the data set that got gives it. in fact accuracy accuracy also the most accurate value you yes got it sir got it sir we we roughly estimated our batch size values by trial and error yeah. with uh, at least 15 values and after a point we finally chose 1500 uh-huh. so that's the reason just give, try to give some interval and see how it works sure sure sir sure sir right. we'll definitely do that so as of now we're in the after defining the utility functions we're building the network now sir we have faced a bunch of errors and once we clear this we will get into the visualization of the outcome sir mm-hmm. because yes. that should be one of your outcome expected outcome got it sir so when you are writing in a conclusion we have made this many number of trials for this uh, trial we got this as a kind of consistency so that should go in your outcome of your entire project work correct sir got it i'll we'll definitely look into that yeah yeah okay yes Uh, sir, obviously, if there is a change in their values, uh, depending upon the values, they will get the results. Sir, the accuracy right. is also like based on the size of the data set what they are using. Lesser right. the number of size, it takes less time for processing, and obviously, they can see a better accuracy because obviously, I mean, you could see that the speed is also less. I mean, the speed will be more less data set. In that uh, part, they can justify. Uh. So that is that should be one of the outcome because they have to do that trial, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes, yes. Sir. Right, right. 
yes, so that's that's our project okay fine well, project is very good maybe in terms of you know implementation we have to see okay got it sir got it it's we are still in the phase so once we're done sir we'll mm. definitely run through it yeah because the outcome of uh, this winter work should be in terms of papers or maybe further refinement in something yes sir yes sir we're going to be refining it and that's one thing second thing is how do you uh, uh, you know um, prove that the work that you have done is better than the existing thing accuracy is one parameter correct sir okay to show that your work is better second yes. thing is the computation complex the time taken hmm. okay to give the required accuracy with very defined time so somewhere that computation complexity you have to yes sir that also comes Fine down that, to yeah. the variance bias problem so uh, if we oh. get a higher accuracy it will obviously take a lot more time and if we yeah. if we try to do it in lesser number of time maybe we might miss our accuracy so it eventually yeah. comes down to the bias bias and variance of the entire batch size and the project scope we've chosen so that's uh, that's yeah. eventually the goal sir what you've mentioned so we're trying to work on that and we're trying to you know get a higher accuracy at a lesser time but uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Once we so there is a that. trade off, trade off of exactly. the algorithms. Sir. Exactly, sir. So yeah, that's that that's is where your challenges. <laughs> yeah, yes, that sir. is where your challenges. Correct. Okay, sir, because sir. if you say SVM or uh, CNN or whatever the algorithms that you are having it, if you take some two three algorithms and try to do the comparative analysis, which yes, is sir. better. Correct. Okay, so that that's the insight what you give it for the further refinement of the work. Correct. Sir. Correct. that's the goal sir yes as you mentioned we're going to be working on that yeah. so uh, have objective 1 2 3 have outcome o1 o2 o3 Got center it. might be linear mapping this is objective this is outcome correct sir objective 1 outcome 1 objective 2 outcome 2 objective 3 outcome 3 got it sir your work is done got it sir got it right okay yes. good I'll work i'll stop presenting sir uh, yeah yes sir that's it sir yeah madam project is very good madam thank you nathishan sir uh, for your audio suggestion we definitely incorporate all these things and uh, we'll see that phase three will go better than even better than the phase two yes ma'am yes sir definitely. good luck to all of you yes sir. thank you sir yeah, thank you thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you ma'am